Good morning, folks. We're beginning today with a joint operation from NASA, ASI, USGS, and JPL Caltech. We're flying low over Saturn's moon Titan. Height of the features have been exaggerated a bit in their animation to make it easier for us to see. You can also see where they've plotted the liquid. Now, speaking of moons in our solar system and liquid, let's stick with water, actually. Chapter 1, we investigated the water volcanism on Enceladus, along with the water found on about a dozen other moons of our gas giants, including Europa. But now we're getting news that Europa has geyser-like water shoots as well. Hubble detected them near the South Pole. We've long thought that certain radio emissions detected at our planet were from distant galaxies. Turns out, we're likely measuring solar flares from nearby stars. That is a good read. Arctic ice having some late-year struggles returning, we see this type of thing every year at this time when we go sideways a bit compared to our normal ice gain up north at this time of year, getting to the low side of average now. RSOE alert map, meteors big enough to make booms frighten folks in the southwest U.S. We have major severe weather hitting the Canary Islands yesterday, leaving a good deal of the island beneath the surge. Coming south, I'm hoping my focus on the South American accumulation so far this month is becoming clear to you. These accumulations don't happen overnight. We should have all seen this coming. Last weather note is some heavy, heavy rain coming to northern Australia. Using the Antarctic Daisy for noctilucent clouds to kick us into space weather today, we're seeing slight rises in neutrons and muons, but the overall cosmic ray level is still normal. Solar wind speed, however, way, way under 300 kilometers per second. That's a major slow and not the first solar wind flux failure noticed lately. Please hold that thought just a moment. Let's diagnose yesterday's CMEs. We said we'd likely get a glancing blow and I stick by that today. There are clear halo aspects to both eruptions. And after watching the CMEs come off the Earth-facing disk on SDO, that's just about all the confirmation we need. But Stereo A with Earth off to the left does help gain insight into the equatorial plasma coming our way. NOAA's Enlil Spiral showing a small impact to occur on Sunday. It does appear NASA's Enlil Spiral shows a slightly earlier impact. Geomagnetic storms may occur, but the grids are not in jeopardy. Solar flaring in mid-sea range with the CMEs popping. Filament eruptions are popping at least half of those flares as the sunspots are magnetically simple. Big incomer up north lacks the central vorticity I'd hoped for and the south technically retains gamma complexity. Slight chance of larger flaring there. Corona hole power is diminishing only slowly. They've never put back the missing images of that wild coronal field movement does seem we have small openings facing Earth today. We never got the watch to major levels. We're still middle of the road. Okay, now back to that solar wind flux fail I asked you to keep in mind. I added a public audio cast last night to the website. It's under premium, but everyone can watch. Go to Fly on the Wall and click the upload from last night. This is my brief notes and context for the latest solar discussion world's top experts saying what all of us here have been observing for all this time weaker everything on the sun and below the context in my notes i went ahead and embedded the full agu video observers will be astounded at how well you already understand this stuff this is the top recommendation today shots of our star to close eyes open no fear at 6:15 a.m eastern time and that's the news be safe everyone